Hello everybody, it's Yashar here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about investing in real estate investment trust or REITs in US and Canada, their basics, the advantages and disadvantages of investing in REITs compared to owning a physical property. And finally, I will show you how to evaluate a REIT by going through their financial statements. REITs are great tools for generating passive income and monthly cash flow. A real estate investment trust or REIT is a company that buys develops, operates, or finances income-producing properties using investors' money, which they call them unit holders, and then return the profits and the rents collected to these unit holders, usually every single month of the year via a specific type of dividend or cash that they call it distributions. Investing in REITs are pretty easy. You can usually buy any number of shares you like in a REIT from major stock exchanges like TSX, or New York Stock Exchange quite easily through your stockbroker. In US, REITs usually need to distribute 90% of their income to unit holders, while in Canada, REITs are not required to pay 90% to unit holders, and the payout ratio is actually depend on the REIT structure. Owning a REIT in a way is like owning a physical real estate and collecting the rent every single month, but with some advantages and disadvantages. The most important advantages of, a, of owning a REIT compared to owning a physical property is that REITs are highly liquid, which means you can buy and sell them almost immediately, like a stock, while buying and selling real estate is a long and costly process. Second, you don't have any responsibility for maintaining the property and fixing different issues while collecting the rent from your tenants with a REIT. This is also a major benefit of the REIT compared to, to be a landlord. Third, you don't need to have a huge amount of cash or come up with at least 5 to 20% down payment and then closing costs to own real estate via REIT, as you can start with as little as $1 to invest in real estate investment trusts. Next, REITs in Canada can not only provide you with monthly income, but also they can provide you with some capital appreciation as well, as they are not forced to pay more than 90% of their profit to unit holders like US. However, even in US, we have REITs that are able to still grow their portfolio aggressively, even with 10% of the income they keep on their balance sheet. An example of such REIT is a stag industrial REIT. Canadian REITs, however, can actually use a significant portion of their profit to reinvest in themselves and buy more properties and generate more income for unit holders. So they are not rely, uh, they do not rely on basically uh, issuing more shares to raise cash. Finally, with a REIT, you can invest in most real estate property types, including apartment buildings, cell towers, data centers, hotels, medical facilities, offices, retail centers, and warehouses. For example, if you like to own medical facilities, you can invest in Northwest Healthcare REIT in Canada. If you like to invest in warehouses that companies like Amazon or Walmart use to ship their products, you can invest in stack industrial or granite industrial REITs. And if you like to invest in shopping malls, you can invest in Ryokan or Smart Center REITs. However, there are also a few disadvantages with owning a REIT comparing to owning a physical property. For example, capital appreciation is much more limited with owning a REIT compared to a physical property. Another important downside is that you cannot leverage your money with REITs, while with a physical property, you can borrow up to 95% of the value of the house or condo and therefore increase your return in terms of the dollar. Finally, the dividends or distribution of rent in REITs are usually not tax-friendly and you may need to pay full tax on the distributions from REITs in non-registered non accounts unlike dividends from regular stocks which are tax friendly and you pay a much lower income tax on those dividends. I personally only own REITs in my TFSA or tax-free saving account to avoid taxes altogether. If you own a REIT in your TFSA, you don't need to pay any taxes, which is great. So you can generate passive income, monthly passive income and not be worried about taxes at all. Now that we understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of owning a REIT, it is important to also understand how to value various real estate investment trusts and how to decide which REIT you should buy. I personally study and uh, basically do my research on six indicators for a REIT, including two valuation and four quality metrics, which are all especially appropriate for real estate stocks. 
Using conventional metrics like price to earning ratio is not a good indicator in REITs. And instead, I personally use these indicators. First, I study funds from operation or FFO of a REIT. And, it, and this basically shows you the cash flow of the real estate company and how much rent the REIT is collecting. So to value the REIT, you should not only look for a growing FFO, but also you should look at the price to FFO ratio and compare it to the five-year average and also to the sector average. Second, I will compare the net asset value of each REIT to their market cap. So net asset value is basically total assets of the company minus their total liabilities. If a net asset value of NAV is larger than market cap, then the REIT, uh, the REIT is in, at a good valuation and it's not in a major risk. FFO and uh, net asset value are, in my opinion, are the best in, uh, value matrix indicators for, for a REIT. Next, I will look at the quality metrics and first I look at the shared dilution rate. Most of the REITs use shared dilution or issuing new shares to raise capital and fund their operation and fund uh, their operation to basically acquire more properties and generate more cash flow. But if the rate that they're diluting you as a unit holder is faster than the rate that they increase their FFO, then it is not a good REIT and you are actually losing money by investing in such company. As such, I usually compare share dilution rate to their FFO growth via FFO per share basically growth rate. And uh, I will then look at their debt to asset ratio to understand the liabilities of the REIT and the risk of investing in the company. Next, I look at the distribution or dividend history to see how the management of the REIT is returning value to the shareholders or unit holders. And finally, I look at their payout ratio, which is basically distribution per share divided by FFO per share. You don't want to invest in a REIT with extremely high payout ratios as it makes the distributions risky and not reliable. For example, if a REIT has a very high basically payout ratio with any minor issue with their tenants, they cannot pay out the distribution anymore as the money they distribute to unit holders will be lower than the rents they collected during that specific period, which can be a month or it can be a year. Now, let's apply these six indicators to a real estate investment trust that I really like and I personally own in my portfolio, which is Granite Industrial REIT. I analyze the company in a detail in a separate video on the channel and I will leave a link to that video in the description box below. So first indicator was FFO or funds from operation. Granite consistently grew its FFO every year and in the last five years their FFO grew by 13.5% year over year, which is great. Their price to FFO is currently close to 20 while their five year average price to FFO is close to 21.4 and their sector average is 22. It seems Granite right now has a relatively good valuation in terms of the FFO. Now to the second indicator. Granite REIT has a net asset value of approximately 5.3 billion Canadian dollar. So basically all the, the, their total assets minus the total liabilities is close to 5.3 billion dollar, while their market cap is close to 5.11 billion, which means it is almost fairly valued in terms of the second indicator, which is net asset value. Now, the third indicator is share dilution rate. Granite consistently dilutes unit holders in the past, but what is important is the ratio between cash flow generation and dilution, which can be found via FFO per share, uh, basically the growth rate of FFO per share. And it seems Granite was able to grow its FFO per share by 4.8% in the last five years, which is great. It means they, while they're diluting shareholders, the rate of increasing the cash flow was much faster than dilution. The next indicator was debt to asset ratio, which is only 28% for Granite and it is very healthy amount for a real estate company because uh, most of the real estate investment trust has usually higher debt to asset ratios. Next indicator is the distribution history and Granite has a long history of paying out and increasing its distribution year over year. In the last five years, they increased their distribution by an average 3.7% year over year, which is good. It is totally in line with their FFO per share growth. So it's not risky. The, the management basically use a very conservative value. Last indicator was payout ratio and for Granite, it is 79.8%, which is good. 
It means they can use 20% of their cash flow to invest in themselves and acquire new properties without raising new shares and continue to grow in the future. As you can see here, Granite has passed all six indicators that I defined before, and that's why I continue to invest in Granite. If you want to invest in a real estate investment trust, you can also apply these six indicators to the REIT that you want and see if it fits your desired return, your investment philosophy, and your risk tolerance. There you are, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the next video, which I will try to finish during the next week, I will apply these six indicators to the top 10 REITs in Canada and show you the valuation of each REIT in detail. But until that time, I see you guys in the next video. Farewell.